Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel, Must Love Labs. My name is Alan. On this channel, we talk about tips and tools for how to raise, breed, and sell Labrador Retrievers as quality family pets. So, if you're new here, you might consider subscribing. In today's video, we're going to do some dog breeding questions and answers. Uh, you folks have been writing in questions on the channel, and uh, we've got enough of them here to uh, go ahead and do a video answering questions that you folks have been asking about dog breeding. So, let's get into the content. All right, let's get going on some of these questions. I, I got uh, a printout here and I'm going to be reading. Bear with me. I don't always do real good with the names, but I'm working on it. So let's see here. Uh, Dr. Harges writes in and he says uh, that I've mentioned PayPal when selling puppies. And should you file this income on your taxes? That is an excellent question for you to ask your CPA. So that's exactly what I would do. I would ask your CPA that question and then follow their advice. Let's see here. Danny the man writes in, if you buy two pups on Puppy Find, are you able to breed the pups that you buy? Uh, that's an excellent question and absolutely you can breed the pups that you buy um, as long as you bought them correctly. And here's what I mean when I say that. Um, if you buy, for instance, AKC, registrable puppies, you have to make sure that you get the full registration, not the limited registration. Uh, what that means is if you have the full registration, if you bought that from the breeder you got the dogs from, then you'll be able to register the puppies. And that's important. Um, they can't stop you from breeding your dogs, but what they can do is stop you from registering the puppies. And that's, that's how that works out. Now, if you go with a different registry, like a ACA dogs or CKC dogs or one of the breed registries, um, then m maybe the breeders have control over that. Maybe they don't. It depends on what registry you're looking at. Uh, but with the AKC dogs, and that's where we really need to focus because that's where the best the money is and, and uh, the best breed standards and so forth for purebreds, um, you need the full registration. And don't sign any spay or neuter contracts. Um, that breeder would be trying to make sure that you don't set yourself up to be a competitor. Uh, so no spay or neuter contracts and make sure that you got the full registration. Now, assuming that you did that, and like you said, the age of your pups is good, then you're good to go. Lottie Lott writes in, um, and we were having some discussion about terminology. Uh, and I mentioned in one of my videos, you know, you've got artificial insemination and then you've got manual breeding where they, where they do it the way nature intended them to do it. And, and both are fine, by the way. Um, but some terminology was the question. And Lottie Lott mentioned that in horses, they, they would be called field breeding. Uh, maybe it's the same in dogs. And I got to thinking about that. And so I looked around all over the place uh, for anybody that would have a, a, a list of uh, terminology uh, for dog breeding. And I, I can't find anybody that wants to, to, to nail that down. Uh, so we're going to go with you, Lottie. We're going to go with field breeding until somebody educates us on a better term. Uh, field breeding sounds just fine to me. Hey, folks, if you're getting value from this video, do us a favor and hit that like button. It really does help out quite a bit. And if you want to support our channel, we've got a Teespring store. I'll put a link in the description. You can stop by and check out a t-shirt or a coffee mug. And thanks in advance for doing that. I also put links in the descriptions to tools and products that we use here at Must Love Labs. So you can check that out as well. El Camino writes in, um, and this conversation was in the context of uh, the video about the whelping box that I showed you, the whelping box on a budget. And he's talking specifically about the rail around the inside of the, 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 the pool there, the box. He says, why the outer rail? Um, traditionally, this is called a pig rail. So when you hear people say, oh, you know, that's, that's the pig rail in the whelping box, or every good whelping box should have a, a pig rail in it. Um, uh, when people used to raise pigs, and still do, I suppose, um, there was problems with uh, the mama pig getting tired and laying down and pinning one of her offspring up against the side of the box, up against the side of the pen. And um, th they would suffocate them that way. It's, it's, it's tragic and th there would just be losses like that. So they started putting a rail around the edge of the box 
to give the babies a place, a, a space, if you will, to get a, to get away from the mama, uh, where they could, would have room to live. And the um, um, same thing was happening in the dog world, although probably not with the numbers you see with pigs. Um, but mama dogs would, would, would pin a, a, a newborn puppy up against the, the side of the whelping box and you'd lose a puppy that way. And so the, the pig rails go into the whelping boxes now for dogs as well. And this gives them a place to go and get away from mama in case she accidentally leans on them and falls asleep, uh, which is easy to happen right after she just gave birth to 10 kids. Um, so that's what the outer rail is for. Uh, people still call it a pig rail. Um, I take a little bit of an issue with that. I, I, I'm going to call it a puppy rail because we're doing dogs. Uh, but that's what, the, uh, that's what that outer rail is for, uh, giving puppies room to live when mama lays down and falls asleep in the whelping box. Great question. Brianna House writes in, um, and she says, I have a question. Maybe you can do a video on um, when we breed the dogs, how do you keep breeding? Do you keep buying purebreds from somewhere, or how does that work? Um, yes, absolutely. You keep buying purebreds from somewhere. Uh, you want to bring new blood into your kennel. Um, some people want to hold back a dog, a male or a female, out of their own litters for future breeding purposes. And that's problematic in that uh, you now have to make sure that that dog doesn't breed with any dog that it's related to. Um, you don't want to breed them back. You don't want the dogs, male or female, breeding back to their parents um, or, or breeding to any of their offspring or, or even their, their grand offspring. That's called line breeding because they're in the same bloodline uh, and you don't want them to inbreed with their siblings. So if you hold back one of your dogs in your inventory for the purposes of breeding, now you have to make sure that that dog doesn't breed with any of its relatives. Um, and the reason for that is this is when unwanted genetic traits start surfacing. They're more prevalent in line breeding and cross breeding and inbreeding uh, than they are when you've got dogs that are completely unrelated that are breeding. Uh, that's not to say that you can't get away with it. Some people do it, but my best advice, and since you're asking, is to bring in new blood. Find, find a, a breeder out there that's got a great stock that you're interested in having in your kennel and, um, and bring in completely unrelated dogs. And um, this gives you genetic diversity. And genetic diversity is your best defense against unwanted genetic traits surfacing. Um, unwanted genetic traits, what are we talking about? Problems with the eyes, problems with the spine, whatever your breed is prone to. Um, you can have cleft palate, you can have tails that are too long, a muzzle that, that, that looks odd, and the list goes on. Um, so it, your best defense against that is genetic diversity, and you do that by breeding dogs that are not related. Hope that helps. Excellent question. Melissa Scassera writes in and she says, uh, Hi, I want to breed a Dudley yellow female, but she will be seven when the male dog will be two. Will she be too old? Well, we're talking about Labradors here that I'm, I'm assuming that your Dudley female is a Labrador. Um, will she be too old? That depends on the dog. She's getting up there, no doubt about it. Uh, most Labrador females are pretty well, pretty well done when they get somewhere around eight years old. And there's a lot of variables with this. Some Labrador females are done when they're four years old. And some of them breed uh, nine, ten years even. Uh, so it really depends on the female and how she's doing and how healthy she is. Um, and you, you, you can't rubber stamp this. You really need to have some uh, informed conversation with your veterinarian about whether or not the dog is too old to breed. Uh, a lot of different things come into play. Uh, we're going to discuss some of the particulars on that on, on, a, on a different question here that I'm getting ready to answer as well. Uh, the AKC won't accept litter registrations from dams that are more than 12 years old. Uh, now that's a big, huge rubber stamp for all breeds. Um, so really, um, with Labradors, a seven-year-old Labrador, uh, she might still be good to go, uh, or, or she might be getting too old. And I would take her in 
uh, and let your veterinarian give her a good examination and have some discussion about how previous litters went and uh, whether or not she should continue to breeding. Um, um, there, there's not an easy answer to that question. She really needs to be evaluated. Hope that helps. Okay, here we've got Frank Bonuito. I hope I didn't screw that up, Frank. Frank Bonuito, um, and he says, hi there, how many times would you breed Rosie and how often? Um, those are two excellent questions and, and I wanna separate them. Um, how many times would I breed Rosie? Uh, we were just talking about Rosie's a Labrador Retriever, obviously. Um, my Rosie, that's who he's talking about. Um, uh, we start breeding Labradors at age two. And like we were just discussing, um, most Labradors uh, are pretty well done with breeding when they get around eight years old. Um, now those are averages. So we'll see when we get there. Uh, but that's a six year breeding window and they come into heat twice a year. So there, there's 12 possible heats there uh, that you might consider letting her get um, pregnant on. Now, am I gonna let her get pregnant on every single one of those? No, that, that's, a, that's a lot of work <laughs> for a mama dog. Uh, am, I, am I gonna make her stop breeding at eight? I don't know, we'll find out when we get there. Uh, my vet's gonna have a lot to do with that question, by the way. Uh, so how often? is the next question, um, and, and a lot of people uh, have different opinions on this one. Some people wanna breed every heat cycle. They say, you know, the dogs come into heat every six months, that's the way nature made them, uh, so let them breed. And other people say, um, you should give them a break in between heats uh, so you don't overwork, overwork them um, and, and, and wear them out. And, and they, call, they say that that's cruel, so you should only breed every other heat cycle. Both of those philosophies are, are rubber stamps, and um, um, certainly it would just be easy to follow some rule like that. Uh, I prefer the, the, the more detailed and difficult route uh, because uh, that's the way I look at things. And every heat cycle, we evaluate our dogs. Um, and I've discussed with, with this with my veterinarian, and we're both on board with this philosophy. And this actually makes sense. Um, every heat cycle, you can evaluate your female and ask yourself a few questions. How's her health? I'm reading a list here. How's her health? Um, is she doing okay? Is she, has she gained back all the weight that she lost during her last litter? Did she get her vitality back? Is she energetic and running and playing and having fun? Um, did her coat come back? Because they always blow their coat out on a heat cycle. I don't know if you've noticed all the shedding that happens, but it's, it's a direct result of all the calcium they just gave to their puppies. Um, there's a tip in there, by the way. Get a calcium supplement for your female. Um, so did her coat come back? Did she get her weight back? Um, and then with that last litter, uh, how are the litter numbers? Did she have an average number of puppies? For Labradors, that would be eight. Um, how were her litter numbers? Um, how well did she do as a dog mom? Was she interested in taking care of the puppies or did you have to kind of, you know, coax her into it a little bit? How's her milk production? Was she feeding them okay? Uh, so there, there's a lot of different things to consider. And if you get a check mark in all these boxes, uh, then when she comes into heat, you take her into the vet, say she's in heat and she's doing pretty good. Uh, what do you think? And you let the vet give her um, a, a pre-pregnancy physical and, and let him uh, uh, chime in on whether or not she should breed again that cycle. Uh, if one of these things doesn't look good, then give her a break. Let her skip a cycle. Um, if all of these things look good, then there's no reason not to go ahead and let her have another litter of puppies. As a matter of fact, there are some really great reasons to go ahead and let her have another litter of puppies. Uh, and this is the other part of this question. Um, when you have a female dog that comes into heat, um, the way that process plays out, she's gonna have a, a massive progesterone buildup in her body, uh, down in the lining of her uterus as well. Uh, and that's gonna spike, it's gonna go through the roof, and when that happens, she ovulates, uh, and the eggs come down, and if she gets pregnant, then this will flush out 
through the whelping of a litter, okay? If she doesn't get pregnant, that stuff doesn't go anywhere. She doesn't get the flush out of whelping a litter. And this is where you have increased instances of pyometria, which is a pus-filled uterus, and that can even lead to cancer. So there's a downside to not letting your female whelp a litter of puppies. If you're not going to let her whelp puppies for more than a few heat cycles, you probably should go ahead and get her spayed and just shut the whole process off um, because this is the way the female dogs are wired. They'll bleed first. That's the first seven days. And then the bleeding will, will taper off a lot or go away altogether. Then their progesterone level spikes, they ovulate, and they've got this huge progesterone buildup in their uterus. And the way that that flushes out naturally is through the whelping of a litter. So if you don't let that process play out, you can actually do more harm than good. Uh, and this is proven and documented for anybody that wants to, to, to look it up and find out about it for themselves. So we weigh these, these decisions every heat cycle as to whether or not they should breed. Uh, if you need to let them skip a cycle to take a break, so be it. Sometimes they need that. Um, that's a lot of information for a pretty short question. <laughs> I hope that helps. And uh, feel free to drop comments on this one and, and, and ask about it some more or look it up yourself. Uh, it's, uh, I, I could do a whole video just on this one subject. Um, but it's, um, uh, we're not going to rubber stamp the breeding process. Um, the people that say, oh, you should skip every other heat cycle, period, uh, and not even give any scientific reason as to why, that's virtue posturing. Um, you know, they feel that way. Their vet probably didn't say that. Uh, and these people that want to breed the dog every single heat cycle, irregardless, um, maybe your dog needs a break. Uh, and if you keep breeding them, you're going to hurt them that way. Uh, so uh, what I suggest that people do is exactly what I'm doing, um, and that is to uh, evaluate your female every heat cycle um, uh, in conjunction with your veterinarian and have a good informed discussion about whether or not she should continue or, or, or skip a cycle. Hope that helps. Well, that wraps up our second dog breeding Q&A video. Um, definitely want to hit that like button for us and uh, subscribe to the channel. We will be discussing this topic and others as we move forward. And thanks for watching Must Love Labs. We'll see you in the next video.